Hello, my name is Xander. Welcome to the Django RM Mastery YouTube Edition course. This tutorial is part of a series of tutorials where we learn how to extend, override the existing Django model, learn how to build a new model leading towards what is probably one of the most common questions asked regarding the user model. How do we create multiple user types? So just how do you create a model which will support multiple users, maybe a student, a teacher, admin, how would you build one model to support different types of users? Ultimately, this set of tutorials will help you decide which approach to take when building a user model for your particular project or business needs. If you haven't worked with the user model before, this tutorial, we introduce the basics of the Django user model. Of course, if you are looking to learn more about the Django ORM, don't forget to check out our course, Django for ORM Mastery. It is currently the highest rated course related to Django ORM. There is a link in the video description which will provide you the best price for this course. So how does the Django user model even come about? Where does it come from? Well, when we create a new Django project, here we have a new Django project. I've just built this new Django project. In the core here, we have the settings. Inside the settings here, we have the installed apps. So these are the default apps that are installed when we create a new project. We can see one of these apps is called Django Contrib Admin, and that's going to then generate the Django user model. As soon as we migrate our project, we can see that a number of tables have been built and we can go ahead and inspect these tables. So here I have the SQLite extension. So I'm able to open up the database, go into the database over here and we can see these are the, the default tables that are generated when we run a migrate on a, a new Django project. The Django user model is a component of the wider authentication system in Django. Now, of course, the user model is core to the Django authentication system in that we must have users to authenticate. Now, if we take a look at the default tables here, we have a, a number of different kind of authentication tables, but the table that we're going to be focusing in on this mini series or this series is the user table. So inside of here, we can see a number of different fields. So it's well worth understanding what fields are available because that's going to help us determine whether we need to extend or add some new fields or generate or build our own user table. So we can see from this field list, we have a information about the last logged in uh, password is super user. We'll have a look at that in a second. So we have a username, a last name, email, and then we have an is staff boolean, is active boolean, date joined, and first name. In your project, if there is absolutely no need to store any other additional information about the user, it could be that the default user Django table is going to be suitable for your project. You may have read, in actual fact, that it's actually a bad idea, or some may consider it is bad practice to utilize the Django default model. Potentially, your application will scale and grow over time, and you'll need to make changes or add additional fields to the user model. And it can be better served, or this can be better done by initially creating your own user model, which you can easily extend. Let's take a deeper look at these fields we have in the user model. So most of them are self-explanatory here. We have password, username, last name, email, uh, first name, date joined. But we have some other and additional Boolean fields here. So is staff is super user. In Django, we say that there are only one class of user which exists, and that's user. So there's just one class of user. So there's just one table and we add one type of one class of user, which is just a user. So user information gets added into this user table, but we can differentiate those users by utilizing these Boolean fields. So a user that we add into the user table here, we can set these Boolean fields is the super user and is, is staff here. 
we can set this to active, to true. And that will then help differentiate that user, that super user from say a normal user. So by setting these Boolean values to true, that will help us restrict access or restrict the user's access to different components, services or features of our application. Because what we can do before the user is able to access, for example, a certain protected page, we can check to see if that user Boolean value is set to true. Are they a super user? If they are a super user, which happens to be the equivalent to the, the main admin user in our system, then they will be allowed access by default to the Django site, the Django admin site by default. If a user is added to the user table here and we don't set is super user or is staff to true, they will, will not be able to access the Django admin site. What this is telling you ultimately is there's no need necessarily for you to create separate user tables for different classes of users. So for example, if we had a student user and if we had a teacher user, there's no need to create two separate tables potentially here if we wanted to differentiate between them. We would simply potentially need to add a new field, a Boolean field, and for example, make that true we could call that field teacher, and then we could make it a Boolean field, set it to true if that particular user that we add to this user table is designated as a teacher. And we could do the same thing for a student. We could have a, a student field with a, um, a Boolean field, yes or no, true or false. And we could set that to true if the user that we added to our user table was a student. Now, of course, some people may be a student and staff, so potentially we could flag them as both. So by doing that again, our system then would be able to determine um, what type of user that person is to give them different access in our application. Take a look at the Django documentation, the django.contrib auth. Here we'll be able to see the user models, all the different default options for all the different fields. So it is worth noting that the username and password is utilized to authenticate a user where maybe log into, into the admin site or whether you've set up a system where users can log into your application. Now that isn't always ideal and generally maybe you would prefer to utilize the email and that's something that we'll learn how to change later on in this series. So we're set up our application to allow the users to type in their email and password, not their username and password. So we can see here from the documentation, in actual fact, the first name, last name, and email, these are all optional. So whenever we're creating new users, those are going to be optional fields by default. There are two ways for us to generate initial users for our application. We can utilize manage.py, and then we're gonna create a new super user. So create super user. So by running this command, we can go ahead and create a new super user, a new admin user, and that will enable us to log into the Django admin site. And from there, we can then add more users. So here we're going to need a, a username, admin, no email, remember that's an optional field, and then password. So you don't get to see the password, but I'm typing it in and I can press yes because it's tried to validate my password, which is just admin, and obviously it's not a very good password, and we're told that is the case. Now behind the scenes, Django does have a list of common passwords um, that would be not recommended to use, and that can then be checked against the password that you use, and it will provide you some information um, and give you some warnings if that password isn't a good password, for example, if it's just a common password, which could be easily guessed. So I bypassed that, so I've now created a new super user. So having done that, of course, I can now go to Python, manage.py, and then run my server, and then access, access the Django site, so 127, uh, 8,000. And then from here, I can type in, I should have anyway, typed in as slash admin, and then just log in, and I can then go ahead to the user table, which has already been registered in my admin here by default. And we can see the current users that have been added to the system. And that's the super user that we've just generated. 
So we can go ahead and add a new user, username, uh, new password. So here it does give me a list of different restrictions when creating. One of them is, like I mentioned, the commonly used password. Uh, so let's just create a new password and then press save. And there we go. So we now have some additional options here. First name, last name. Remember, this is all optional. Permissions. So I won't be talking about permissions in this mini series. There is a another series not too long ago where we discussed a little bit more about permissions. So do check that out. And then I just need to press save. And there we go. We have a new user. So notice here we're not flagged as staff or admin user. So this user will not be able to log in by default to the admin panel. If you wanted to access or create a user via the shell here, we need to access the user model. So we can do that by accessing the Django Contrib or models and then import the user. So let's go ahead and do that. Python 3, manage.py, and then, so I've got user in my head now, shell. So I just clear that, bring this up a little bit. So from here, we need to say from Django.contrib.org auth.models. There are a few different ways of accessing auth.models. There is a different, few different ways to do this, but let's go ahead and import user. Um, no model named. Okay. Apologies. Let's put a dot here. No? I put it in twice. Okay. 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 Right. So let's uh, bring that in. So we now have that available to access. So let's say x equals and then user dot objects dot create user. Okay, so we can use create user to create a new user. Let's do that. So let's first of all define uh, the username. So there's going to be three parameters here, the username, email and password. And that matches the process that we just went through to create a new super user. So you can see that that is the default process behind the scenes. Django is going to ask us for a username, email, and password. So let's go for username. Let's call this user one. And then in actual fact, the email can be blank. Remember that's not required. And then a password. So let's just go for something crazy. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's see if we can get, get aware of this. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. And let's now go into the, let's go back into the admin here. We should still be, oh, we're not logged in. Let's open up a new shell. Run the server. Go back in and refresh. You can see here, we've just created our new user. So we have just created that user. It is just a, a, a normal, I say a normal user. So it hasn't been assigned to staff status or super user. So if we're going back into the documentation here, we're actually given some more additional information about the default user managers. Um, here we go, the man manager method. So we just utilize the create user here and that allowed us to create a, a new user. And you can see there are some additional actions that can be performed. So it's well worth taking a read of that if you do want to utilize this approach to create new users. So hopefully now you're in a position where you can determine whether in your project, the default Django model will be suitable for your project. Does it have all the correct fields and behaviors that is required for your particular build? If the answer is no, then the rest of this series will go and have a look at some of the different changes that we can make. Now, there are different approaches here, and this is why there are multiple tutorials in this mini series. So we'll start with something very simple, and then we'll lead up to more uh, bigger changes, and then leading then into the final tutorial where we discuss multiple user types.